Well, it's a pleasure and an honor to be here. I wear a lot of different hats, but I have uh, one mission, and that's trying to stamp out the discrimination and gender bias that is hurting all communities. I am an attorney, and in my private practice, I represent incarcerated fathers, ex-offenders, celebrities, artists, doctors, lawyers, NFL players, I even represent elected officials. And they all have the same problem. They're confront confronting, at a minimum, gender bias. Some are confronting racial discrimination and other issues. But, the, uh, but in my practice, uh, another focus I have is that justice shouldn't be a luxury for my clients. I, uh, unfortunately, justice is a luxury for many people, and often justice is a luxury only the rich and the poor. So basically, uh, my mission is promoting responsible fatherhood and support, because if you look at the statistics, you'll see that 72% of all teenage murders grew up without fathers, and, every, and fathers and children are more likely to die out on the school. The absence of a biological father increases his daughter's vulnerability to rape. So why are we kicking fathers to the curb? All uh, right, that's a question uh, nobody can answer, uh, but we can make certain assumptions. The reason I do this type of work, as with cases, as well as personal experience uh, of mine, uh, one was a burglary case I defended as a young lawyer for my client. Uh, I never put him on the stand to testify because I couldn't understand the word he told me. And I didn't think about the innocent and guilty myself. He just was unable to communicate effectively. So I didn't put him on the stand. There were two eyewitnesses that testified they saw him commit the burglary. Uh, I, I tried that case for one, got not guilty. Uh, and uh, the co defendant was represented by another attorney who I was sure was innocent. The police just snatched him up. And it didn't even make sense. He was in the wrong place, at the wrong time, and he. Uh, and, and he had a bad look about it. But, you know, it's not a, uh, a crime to look a certain way. So he was arrested. His lawyer fled him out. He went to prison for years for a crime he didn't commit. And I talked to a lawyer afterward, and he said, How do you win? You did not build me. I said, I don't know. My question is, why didn't you plead on the client when he was innocent? And he told me, Well, I'm working on the bond slip. You know, I mean, you know, I, I, I could pay rent. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to try to use my boss. All right, that's one of the reasons I do this work. And the other reason I'm trying to talk fast, and I probably two of them this left. I represent the minority father. Uh, his wife, all the years, under the influence of drugs and alcohol, smashed up a vehicle, causing permanent brain damage to her baby boy. She was arrested. A boy went to the Cook County Hospital, never to walk again, permanently brain damaged. I was in front of the judge in this case, and the judge blew up when I asked for custody for the father. And she, she did not want to get custody for the father. So here I was having difficulty because of the gender and also because of my minority father. So it was very difficult. I was able to finally convince the judge to award temporary possession of the child and the father without uh, prejudice to a full hearing, meaning when the child was released from Cook County Hospital, permanently brain damaged, unable to, to, to function. Uh, at least the child would be released, released in the care of my client who was hooked on drugs. Uh, well, when I was walking out of the courtroom, and my client was in tears and falling apart because he loved his boy, the judge started screaming again and looked at me as a counselor. I want him on rehab, I want him on drugs and alcohol, when she's rehabilitated. I want that child to have uh, with Mom, do you understand the money? And I said, Yes, I do. I understand it very well. And I walk out of the courtroom. Just to give you an example of why I do what I do. And now I'm trying to summarize everything uh, because I can see uh, what, what's on the sign in front of me in the first row. <laughs> the, media, the media defines and glorifies male violence. The media defines manhood as such. The result, many fatherless boys end up locked up because they define manhood based on what they see on TV because they don't have dads around. 
gender bias and discrimination can then adds to the curve. The result, their children end up locked up. Not all of them, but the, the most reliable ridiculous crime in America is law or absence. So if you take their children to the curve, you increase the reality that all the children in that community will not have the same advantages as children in other communities. The result, more children having more problems. And then you have these incarcerated fathers that most people don't care about. And I've lectured in state, Little Cook County Jail, and I talked to a lot of these dancers. I'm trying to figure out why are they abandoning their children? Because they have low self esteem, low self esteem. Because they believe to love their children, they have abandoned them because they believe they're worthless. And that's not true. That's not true. The most reliable predictor of crime in America, the most reliable predictor of crime in America is father essence. So these dads walk away, it increases the likelihood that their children will end up incarcerated because the boy can't be what he can't see. In a nutshell, we have to promote substantial positive father energy and involvement by uh, the media. We have to provide free parenting education to the media and incarcerated fathers. We need to create a judicial task force to educate judges on the importance of fathers because the judge will make decisions yes. that cause children to lose their fathers. Thank you.